Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello out there. We're on the air. Happy Monday, everybody. The happiest of Mondays to you. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Bitcoin Journey. Are we live? Oh, there we go. We're back. We're back. Okay. So there were zero people in here, but it has been updated. Jose is in the house. Good morning, my friend. Johnny. Oh, what's happening here now? What do we got going on? Oh, yeah. It is Monday. It is Monday. It's always a tough start on Monday. A little bit of rust to shake off. But we're here. We've been here. Everybody's been here. Everybody's showing up. Rock and roll. Good morning. Exciting times. That is an understatement, my friend. Jason, good morning. And Tommy, holy cow. What do we got over on zap.stream? Crypto Ethan is over there. Good morning. What the heck is going on there? Okay. Start the show. We got a good one today. <laughs> we got a good one today. Uh, where should we start? Well, let's start with the daily Bitcoin journey. Good, uh, welcome, everybody. This is the daily Bitcoin journey. Every morning, we do a show talking about Bitcoin. And uh, the focus here is actionable and logical discussion for Bitcoiners. Lots of Bitcoiners in the chat. And for future Bitcoiners, the ones who aren't here yet. So over these next couple months, there's going to be a lot of people typing into the Google search or the YouTube search, Bitcoin. And so we have to make sure that if we want them to stick around, if we want them to have enough conviction to get through this cycle, not sell their Bitcoin to BlackRock, they need to understand things, everything that's going on here. So what you can do is simple. You can press like. You can leave a little comment in the video. You can share it. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribing on whatever you're listening to. We got YouTube. We got Zap.Stream. I don't know if you can even subscribe there or not. But Spotify too, there's a bunch of people who have been listening to the show on Spotify. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm giving a shout out to Spotify because it doesn't really do much <laughs> and other than teaches people about Bitcoin. So I guess we'll do a shout out to Spotify. The viewership has been growing significantly on Spotify. So welcome. And apparently you can do videos there too as well. So all my shows are on there, full video. And uh, people have been checking that out. But nothing like the live show, that's for sure. Good morning, Dan. Adrian Lee, all roads lead to Bitcoin. Absolutely they do. That's what. That's kind of the focus for today's show. Is It's called flip everything on its head. All, all roads lead to Bitcoin. And we have to start thinking about this whole thing completely differently than we are right now. I had some time to think over the weekend. I had a weekend off. And I had some time to think and ponder and I think that everybody here, everybody who's in Bitcoin right now is underestimating what's happening here in Bitcoin and what's coming. The people who aren't in Bitcoin yet, they don't really have a clue about anything. They see Bitcoin as a, a number on the screen. They see it as something that goes up and it goes down. So they don't, they don't have a clue. But even Bitcoiners, I think, are significantly underestimating <clears throat> what's happening here. So that's what we're talking about today. Daniel says, good morning. We're living in the future. Speaking of that, we are doing a living in the future show today. So this one's going to be a little bit shorter than our usual. We're going to hop over to the living in the future, which is a very happening place right now. There's been lots of people joining. It's five bucks a month, but we cover a bunch of different things in there. There's a network that's forming a whole community, and it's focused on three things. Becoming better Bitcoiners, building in Bitcoin and earning Bitcoin. And of course, the network aspect. So I'll give you, you got some time still, but you can click the description, click living in the future. It'll take you to a, a page there. You can join for seven days for free. After that, it switches to five bucks a month, but it is the best five bucks you'll ever spend. And especially after what I'm about to tell you today. Robert, pump it up. The, the price is pumped up. I woke up 
usually when the price runs up, I get a few notifications from CoinGecko through the night. But I didn't get any today. And I opened the price up. I opened Twitter up, actually, and saw that the price was about 72.5. So that was nice. Not really, because <laughs> I have a few more purchases to make in Bitcoin. A few more non-KYC purchases to make in Bitcoin. Because we have exactly one week left. This, I should have started the show with this, but we kind of we kind of are. We have one week left. If you're in Canada to buy a non-KYC Bitcoin from the post office with cash. And I don't know if you've done that yet. Not a huge uh, portion of my audience is actually from Canada. But I know that there, there's about 10 or 15% of people who watch this show that are from Canada. So if you are from Canada, you still have one week to purchase non-KYC Bitcoin, which means that nobody knows that you have it. And depending on who you listen to, what you subscribe to, that could be worth... Uh, not more valuable, but just in terms of if things went wrong, you're still going to have that non-KYC Bitcoin that's not attached to you. So one week, if you don't have an account there, you can use, there's a link in the description below as well. Everything you'll ever need in regards to the show is always going to be in the description. So click the link there, you get 20 bucks worth of free Bitcoin, sign up for an account and get down to the post office and buy as much Bitcoin as you possibly can this week, non-KYC. It's important. And time is running out. <clears throat> Rock and Roll says, if we close the month here, it would be the first time in Bitcoin history to close out eight consecutive months. I'm guessing ahead. That would make sense. Because it has been a very slow climb here to get to where we are today. I think we're at an all-time high again. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. Oh, that's not good news. Sachi said he tried to bull Bitcoin at the post office Friday afternoon. And they asked for ID for the first time. So their post office has already jumped the gun. We we're supposed to get up until April 15th. I'm going to head in. I'm going to head in there today or tomorrow to try. So I will report back. Zap Dodge stream. How are we doing? Letha's over there. Good morning, Letha. And ballsy golf. There we go. Zap Dodge stream. You can always get to Zap Dodge stream very easily. Go to bitcoinjourney.ca, my website, and then just put slash stream and it'll redirect you right to the Zapdos stream. That's where the Bitcoiners hang out. That's where you can interact with Bitcoin. Everything's going to have Bitcoin implemented into it in the future. Bitcoin and Noster. Everything we're doing anyways. So you might as well get ahead of the curve, test it out. Zap, you can just go to zap.stream or you can go to bitcoinjourney.ca slash stream. So... It is April the 8th today, which means we got the solar eclipse. I think that's today. Apparently, we're not in the path of totality or even close to it. So I'll take a look. What time does it happen? I, I'm very out of the loop with this kind of stuff, but I've seen a few videos in the last couple of days on Instagram, and I, I really didn't understand what the solar eclipse was until watching these videos, but it's pretty cool, especially if you're in that path of I think it's called totality. Totality reminds me of like a totalitarian government. Canada is definitely in that path of totality right now. But we're not in the path of the solar eclipse totality. Justine, hi everyone. Grateful to make it this morning. Glad to have you here. we got a good show today. Let's get to her. Better open up my book here. Oh, it is Masters Week. Ballsy Golf, it is Masters Week. Which is the greatest week of the year. We got new Bitcoin all-time highs coming. It's almost $100,000 in Canada today. We got the Masters Week. LV99 eclipses today. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, Crypto Heathen over in Zap.Stream says, the 2017 eclipse was really cool. I was working as a lifeguard that day. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So he's in St. Louis. Decent view there. I don't know what it'll be like here. I've never watched it before. Never even thought about it before. Back in 2017, I was a much different cat than I am today. That's for sure. <laughs> I was probably more concerned with 
the Winnipeg Jets getting into the playoffs around this time than to care about a solar eclipse. Letha says they got 80% of the eclipse in South Carolina. That's pretty good. I wonder what I would be here. Probably like 60%. I don't know. Sachi says, not sure if anyone noticed Sunday morning the fees were six. Yes, I did see that. Six sats per V-byte. Cha-ching. Move some funds, consolidated a bit, dump some Ethereum into Bitcoin. Oh, what a Sunday. What a Sunday. You have to take advantage of those times. And I've gotten into a few, not arguments, but there's been people, because I take clips of these videos now, every show there's people who, who watch the, the full show. You get everything with it. But I also started clipping things throughout the show, just different, um, shorter versions of it. And I started posting those. And so I've been getting quite a few different comments on these channels. And a lot of them, people think that uh, the fees are going to be very high in the future. In terms of if you have like 100,000 sat, uh, 100, sat UTXO, that it's going to be unspendable. I don't subscribe to that theory. And the reason I don't subscribe to that theory is because if you're somebody like me who believes that eventually one day, one sat is going to equal $1. And if, if you think that the Bitcoin blockchain is going to be, the mempool is going to be busy enough for the fees to go up at that time, then the, the price of Bitcoin will go up with that as well. And so if you think about that, one sat equals $1, somewhere between here and there, then you think about how much it would cost people to move uh, Bitcoin. So let's say that the, it's it costs 10,000 sats to send a transaction. That's going to be $10,000. Somebody's actually going to pay that to send. I don't think so. I think that fees are going to stay around this um, level in terms of like 10 sats per rebyte, 20 sats per rebyte, 30 maybe. I think that's going to be the average forever. But over time, that's going to be more and more expensive in fiat terms. So it's not going to change in Bitcoin terms, but I think it's going to go way up in terms of fiat price, obviously, as Bitcoin rises in price. So all that. So that's kind of my theory on it. I just don't see any other way around it because if it's going to cost somebody $10,000 to move Bitcoin, nobody's going to be using it. And at that point, Bitcoin will have failed essentially. So if you understand what I'm saying, then hopefully it makes sense. Daniel's got a hundred percent view of the eclipse today. All kind of folks here to view. I've heard some horror stories in terms of how long it takes to get to these places and, and get through traffic. So I'd imagine that uh, Daniel's town is buzzing. <laughs> we we have a country music fest in in Manitoba. It's called Country Fest, and so the town that it's in is Dauphin, and the Do the town of Dauphin is about ten thousand people. City of Dauphin, ten thousand people on average live there. But during Country Fest week in the summer, especially when it was really buzzing, uh, the the town size would double. So I kind of understand that when you got people coming into your town, double or triple even. So I understand that. James Bond is in the house. Friend, smash that cute blue like button for Jor the Goat. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Uh, we got a new face over in Zap.Stream, Googs. What do you think about the big banks reaching out to miners directly to buy Bitcoin in order to keep the price down? Seems like they still don't understand that they can't control this. That is very, very accurate statement there. So what, what Googs is talking about there is that the CEO of HUD8 mining company went on mainstream news and announced that the big banks were actually reaching out to Bitcoin miners directly and saying, don't sell your Bitcoin. Don't, don't give it to the market. We're going to buy it from you. And I'm sure with that conversation, they're not just asking to be nice and hoping for a favor they're definitely paying some sort of premium for that because they're trying to keep the price down i think so that's happening i think it's been happening for a long time now and one of my theories about that as well got a bunch of theories on the show but one of my theories on that is that if you look at blackrock if you look at the big companies like that who have these etfs if you look at the mining shares that they own they own pretty much all of the miners, not like a controlling influence on it, but a significant 
portion of the shares of these mining companies. So I think that there's been a lot of backdoor deals for the last couple of years in terms of the ETF providers reaching out to the miners and saying, don't sell your Bitcoin, hold on to it. We'll, we'll finance you. We'll help get you through the this next little bit, but just hold on to that Bitcoin. So, I mean, I, I don't want to go too far into it because I wanted to keep the show quick today. But anyways, let's, let's leave it there for now. Okay, well, I can't get lost here in the comments. We got to keep going. Sorry. The, the master's pool. I want to talk about this really quickly because I'm sure that there are some golfers in this chat or at least some golf fans. So it is master's week. Every major and a few other tournaments, we do a sats pool which is essentially a golf pool with Bitcoin. So if you're interested, if you're going to be watching the Masters this week, if you want to put a little bit of Bitcoin on the line, very cheap. It's like, I think the last one was 20,000 sats to buy in, but you win Bitcoin instead of cash. And it's very easy to sign up, send. You don't have to worry about e-transfers, anything like that, just with Bitcoin. So if you are interested in joining the Masters pool for this weekend, just shoot me an email, all the information uh, is in the description there. So there you have it. And Googs also says, from what I've heard, the miners are holding firm on selling. I, I think it really depends on the miner because I, I've heard of some miners who don't hold any Bitcoin, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, honestly. He, he had a valid discussion over it in terms of why did they don't keep any Bitcoin. They sell it every month. They pay their electricity. And they keep their reserve just to make sure that they have enough operating cash. Miners have to, it's a very interesting business. Very interesting business. There's nothing like a mining company and having to manage the cash flows around that. Because every four years, and we're, we're 12 days away from it now. But every four years, the new supply of Bitcoin, the mining rewards, the miners revenue gets cut in half. So their electricity bill doesn't go down but their revenue gets cut in half essentially. So they really have to manage their, their cash flow in a very ef efficient way. And especially these bigger miners now who have a lot of people to report to, including shareholders. Anytime you're a public company, you have the board of directors, you have your shareholders. And so you have to keep them top of mind. So very interesting. BlackRock is definitely deep into the mining companies. They have been for many years now. Okay, so the title of today's show, we got some news to get through, but the title today is Flip Everything on Its Head. And I saw this quote that I wanted to start the show with today, 18 minutes into it. And the quote is, voting is the adult version of writing a letter to Santa Claus. Voting is the adult version of writing a letter to Santa Claus. I don't know who said it. It was just kind of a meme I saw on Twitter this morning. But it's the truth. People get so caught up. People spend so much of their day. And I'm gu I was guilty of this for sure. I spent a lot of time really deep into politics. I spent the first 30 years of my life not giving a shit about anything to do with politics. And then the next two or three years, that was my entire life. And then once I realized, once something clicked within my head that there's not a politician on this planet that's going to turn things around here. It's up to us. And Bitcoin is that way for us to do that in a, what it, what's it called? In a sly roundabout way. So we're not going to vote our way out. We're not going to go to war with our government. All we can do is just use this currency, build our own communities, build our own networks, start earning, start buying in Bitcoin. And they can't really do much about it. So that's the show. And we have to flip everything on its head because, well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Adrian says, in Manitoba, 70% solar eclipse will be visible. Some northern communities will get to see a partial eclipse. Interesting. I don't know what 70% will look like, but I, I guess I can kind of vision, envision it. I've seen a few videos now, so I'm a solar or uh I'm a solar eclipse expert, some might say. Brennan says, when I listened to Fred Thiel talk about Bitcoin a few times, I plowed into Mara. Is that mining? 
Got to be. Yeah, Mara is a uh, – is that Marathon? I don't know. Anyways, I've had some – just to give my experience with Bitcoin miners, I've had some stocks that I've owned, including HUD-8. I've recently sold them. I, I just don't – I don't know. There, there's just something that doesn't sit right with me. Not that they're doing bad at all. I just think that they do have too much influence from – the big banks, I think that they have they waste too much in being public in terms of their reporting standards that they have to follow, their audits, their legal team. There's just so many costs involved with being a public company and their margins are pretty thin as it is. So I don't know. I sold all my mining shares. I swapped some over to the ETF. I swapped some into MicroStrategy. And who knows? That's kind of where I'm at right now. Definitely not advice, just what I had done. But with that in mind, it's important to, to clarify the fact that if you are a Bitcoiner, if you understand Bitcoin enough, you should have the majority of all of your investments in Bitcoin self-custody, not on ETF, not in MicroStrategy, not in a mining company, in your own possession, in your custody. That's, what, that's the beauty of Bitcoin. That's what it was designed for. Great quote here as a follow-up to that quote. If voting made any difference, they wouldn't let us do it. It's true. It is true. And Bren says, I had a teacher when I was young who said, you must vote or you will eventually lose the right. That always stuck with me, so I don't abstain. Hmm. That's a, I've heard that too. I mean, that's kind of what we were taught as kids is that you should vote. You have to vote because... You have the right to do it. And our, our grandfathers fought for that, I guess. And so I do understand it. I do understand the thing there. But I also understand that everything that they teach us in school is by design. In terms of money, in terms of voting, in terms of history, it's all by design. So we have to get out of that old way of thinking and into the new way of thinking. Yeah. Daniel says, I had shares of Mara, but I did what Jordan did. The mining company balance sheets don't look great. They don't. They don't turn a profit. They they lose half their revenue every four years. Their costs keep going up. It's very hard to manage. So mining companies historically have not done well. Even through the best of times in Bitcoin, there hasn't been any mining companies that I've seen that have actually turned a profit. So I, I do think that there's definitely something in terms of running your own miner at home or private. I think that there'll be a lot of private equity that starts from like smaller mining firms in terms of remote locations and just a smaller private corporation that's not public. I do think that those will do well, but in terms of like the big public companies, I don't know. I'm just going to avoid them. Okay, let's keep moving here. The metrics. 23 minutes into the show today. Yeah, Brent, I mean, this is a great point for Brent. My thinking was to get more exposure to Bitcoin and retirement accounts. Pre-micro strategy. Yep, but we're not in pre-micro strategy anymore. <laughs> so that's where I would be. That's where I do, not where I would be. Okay, where are we here? We are, oh, we just saw a block be mined. We are at 838304. So we are about, what, 1,700 blocks away from the halving? 1,700 blocks away from the halving. Is that right? Yeah, it is. 12 days, 1,700 blocks. That's going to be a big day. We're doing a show that day. I don't care. We're supposed to do something that day. I have plans that day, but I'm going to take a portion of the day and do a show. Have to. Uh, fees this morning are very low. We got 11 sats per V-byte right now. If you're transact, holy, blocks are coming through fast. Look at that. Just now, one minute ago, 
two minutes ago, two minutes ago. That's four blocks just happened within two minutes. And if you watched last week's show, it took us 45 minutes to get through two blocks. So the blocks are every 10 minutes on average. But as we can see here, sometimes quicker, sometimes slower. Holy. We got all of the year's data today. We just saw April 8th. The price today, $72,000, $72,296 US. One year ago today, you could have purchased that exact same Bitcoin for $27,000. So we're 3X from one year ago today. And 2020, four years ago today, you could have purchased one Bitcoin for $7,331. So we're 10X from four years ago today. That's the kind of impact that the halving has. Four years ago today, we're 10x since then. So if history repeats, we will be at 702,000 this time in four years from now as we're leading up to the next having epoch. And that, yeah. <laughs> and if you understand the power of exponential growth, let me bring that up quickly. Uh, Moscow time today is one US dollar equals 1,382 sats. And here in Canada, the price is just about 100,000 bucks, 98,613 Canadian monopoly, illusionary Canuck bucks. Moose time today, we're almost at 1,000. We're almost at the point where $1 will get you 1,000 sats. I don't love that for in terms of buying Bitcoin, but I love that in terms of Bitcoin adoption growing. Let's see if I can find this thing here. We're taking a guess. There it is. Yep. That's why I keep these all bookmarked. So this is the exponential growth chart. This is how every new technology works. And you have to consider the fact that Bitcoin is a protocol like the internet is a protocol, like email is a protocol, and like Noster is a protocol. So these technologies all, grow, all go through this exact same exponential growth chart. And so I'd say in terms of where we are right now on this chart, I'd say we're maybe about right here. I don't know if you can see my click or not. I'd say we're about right here. And so we've seen Bitcoin go 10x in the last four years in this little wee graphic right here. But we haven't even scratched the surface in terms of where we're going. We are so early in this whole thing. So early. So I wanted to show that quickly just, just because. It's important to know where we are. It's important to know where we're going. So that is the metrics for today. Let's take that off of there. Pierre Richard thinks we'll be there next year at 700,000. That's interesting. I mean, I I wouldn't disagree with that. I, I'm not going to say that I'm expecting that. I, it definitely could happen, though. The, the way this whole thing works, the way the technologies work, it definitely could happen. Uh, Ballsy Golf says, saw this on Twitter, 3 billion of Bitcoin will be liquidated at 72,000. So I'm thinking that'll be, sorry, I missed that comment before, but I'm thinking that would be from shorts, people shorting Bitcoin right now. And so if it gets to the price of 72,000, all of those shorts are going to be wiped out. That's what I think on it. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Uh, Daniel says, this is another quote from Mayor Rothschild. Permit me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. agree with that. Gary, good morning. I think that's a shocked face. Rick, my man, if you haven't checked out Rick's channel yet, it's also in the description, I think. Maybe I took it off there, but I'll, I'll add it again today. Rick's got a good channel going. 
So he says, getting getting slammed at work, but had to come smash the like. Appreciate that, my friend. And Bond says, yes, shorts. So that's what's happening. If the price of Bitcoin gets to 72,000, all $3 billion worth of shorts will be wiped out. That would be so good to see. Who would be, who in their right mind would be shorting Bitcoin right now? Who? Especially when you look at charts like this. This is the Bitcoin news segment of the show. This segment is sponsored also by Bitcoin news. Big shout out to Bitcoin news. They are a supporter of the show. It's nice to see these companies uh, giving some love to some of the smaller channels. And what I'm going to talk about at the end of the show, I think is going to excite you quite a bit. And so big shout out to Bitcoin news for supporting this channel and for doing such great work. It's, it's nice to have a news outlet, I guess you'd say, that's not the mainstream, that isn't CNBC, Fox News. These guys are just giving the Bitcoin news uh, in an unbiased fashion, probably a little bit biased towards Bitcoin, but they, they show the good news, the bad news. They got memes on there and some great videos on there as well. So that's what I thought, Daniel. I thought it hit 72 this morning. When I did the price stuff, it was at 72. So anyways, Bitcoin news. If you haven't entered their contest yet either, it's over on Twitter. I've entered it every single day and I'm over. So I'm hoping somebody maybe in this chat has won, but I haven't yet. Still, still got 12 days though in the contest. So this is the quarterly returns for the first quarter in 2024. You can see here, the one that's highlighted, the one that's way ahead of everything else is Bitcoin. 67% up in quarter one. Second best, as it says here, there is no second best. But the second best in this case was mid cap equities growth fund at 15%. So you look at this chart, this is quarterly. You look at the, which would also be annual for 2024. You look at the monthly charts. If you look at every other chart, essentially, instead of looking day to day with Bitcoin, it is the number one decade, year, month or quarter, month, everything except day to day, Bitcoin is number one. And some days it's much bigger than, than everything else. So what do we got here? What's the losers? U.S. long-term treasuries, oof, down negative 3%. Global real estate down 1.8%. U.S. real estate down negative 1.2%. That's tough. So, I mean, you just have to ask the question of why would you be in anything else right now? This is before the having to. And I think that you'd be anywhere other than Bitcoin because you don't understand what's happening in Bitcoin. That's the only thing that I can think of. So that's the quarterly returns. What else we got here? Coinbase. This is some news out of Canada. Coinbase has been registered in Ontario as a restricted dealer under the Canadian Securities Administrators. Look at that dummy. So the only reason I wanted to bring this up today is to tell you not to ever buy your Bitcoin through Coinbase, regardless of what the CSA says. Stay away from Coinbase. Use bull Bitcoin if you're in Canada. If you're in any other country, find a different exchange other than Coinbase. This company is not for Bitcoin. They're more for BlackRock than Bitcoin. This is a cool one. This is a cool one. So it says, just in, Ords Games has un unveiled the BitBoy One, a handheld gaming platform that allows users to earn Bitcoin and ordinals through gaming. This translucent device doubles as a hardware wallet and is unrelated to the eponymous crypto influencer. <laughs> I'm glad they, they clarified that because it is called the BitBoy. When I first saw this, I thought that he was putting this out and I was immediately turned off by it, but it is good to know that it is unrelated to the crypto influencer BitBoy. So that's pretty cool. I think that I will honestly buy one of these when they're available. I don't know how, 
but I will honestly buy one of these because I used to have a Game Boy when I was a kid. We had a Game Boy that looked just like this. I think mine was, mine might have been orange, maybe blue. But we played a lot of Pokemon on there. It's fun. I'd, I'd much rather be on something like this than on my phone, doom scrolling through Twitter or something. So I will definitely be buying one of these. And it's pretty cool that you can earn Bitcoin with it as well. So that is pretty cool. If anybody can find information on how to buy that, uh, please send it my way. I will be a buyer of that. <laughs> Drew says, have you seen BitBoy's Batman bit? <laughs> no, I don't think so. The guy is wild though. I mean, I can't stand him. I think that he's done nothing but bad things for Bitcoin overall, but he's pretty entertaining. And Drew's talking about a bat, um, Batman bit. And I also saw him boxing about a month ago, which was very entertaining. So he's a wild man. I'm not a fan, but I am a fan of the BitBoy Game Boy thing. It is the funniest shit you'll ever watch. Well, maybe, no, we won't have time today. I'll take a look after the show, though. Maybe we'll watch it tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, this is the next one here. I'm sure... Some people have seen this, but if not, you're in for a treat. This is the Federal Reserve President, Neil Kashkari, when he was asked whether the Federal Reserve will put Bitcoin on its balance sheet. Let's have a listen to this. It's a two-minute clip. I got to take this off here, though. <clears throat> Somebody said that my volume on these videos was too quiet compared to my mic but i don't know how to change that so you're gonna have to deal with it so here we go let's hear what the uh very intelligent very educated neil has to say about bitcoin I don't know if I did that right. I don't think I did that right. Let me try that again. Yeah, I couldn't hear it either. Just, I was just about to say I'm finally starting to figure this out too. And then I do that. So good thing I didn't say that. I'll start it again with sound. So I, 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 I shouldn't ask this next question, but I will. I came from a reader. When will the foot, when will the Fed put Bitcoin on its balance sheet? You you've already said on record that you have unlimited you have an unlimited supply of dollars. Doesn't it make sense to trade some of them for a currency with a hard cap? Is that hard cap? I mean, the hard cap I guess for is zero for Bitcoin it could go down to zero. Uh, it's um, it, it just replace the words uh, Bitcoin with Beanie Babies. You know, should the Fed buy Beanie Babies because Beanie Babies were a fad for a while, had no actual utility in the economy other than they were a nice toy that some people enjoyed owning and trading. Uh, I always ask people, is there any, has anybody actually bought anything with Bitcoin? And Bitcoin enthusiasts will say, oh, yes, I bought something. But I'm talking about in mainstream America, when I travel around and I give talks, I always ask the audience, has anybody in this audience ever bought something with Bitcoin? A sandwich, a cell phone, a book? And nobody ever has. It's the only use case that I can come up with. Holy moly. <clears throat> Okay, let me try something here. Let me try something. Because Rick said, I just got dropped there. Maybe the Fed shut me down. I'm going to try something here with the playback. So this might have an impact on my microphone a little bit. But I'm going to see if this helps. I think we're back now. Are we? Anyways. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this from the start. <laughs> So this is the president of the Federal Reserve comparing Bitcoin 
to Beanie Babies. We're going to try this again with better sound. And hopefully I don't drop out this time. Let's try this again. You know, some days it's just, I think this must be a Monday kind of thing. Okay, here we go. So I, 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 I shouldn't ask this next question, but I will. I came from a reader. When will the foot, when will the Fed put Bitcoin on its balance sheet? You, you've already said on record that you have unlimited, you have an unlimited supply of dollars. Doesn't it make sense to trade some of them for a currency with a hard cap? Yeah, what is that hard cap? I mean, the hard cap, I guess, for, is zero for Bitcoin. Could go down to zero. Uh, it's um, it, it just replace the words uh, Bitcoin with Beanie Babies. You know, should the Fed buy Beanie Babies because Beanie Babies were a fad for a while, had no actual utility in the economy other than they were a nice toy that some people enjoyed owning and trading. Uh, I always ask people, is there any, has anybody actually bought anything with Bitcoin? And Bitcoin enthusiasts will say, oh, yes, I bought something. But I'm talking about in mainstream America, when I travel around and I give talks, I always ask the audience, has anybody in this audience ever bought something with Bitcoin? A sandwich, a cell phone, a book, and nobody ever has. It's the only use case that I can come up with, except for the evangelists who, who contort themselves to try to find use cases. In the real world, the only use cases that I've seen are trying to subvert banking regulations, you know, get around either marijuana banking or other or illicit activities, et cetera. Uh, I don't think subverting banking regulations is a legitimate use case. Uh, and until, you know, one other thing I'll say, the Bitcoin bros who are watching this right now are saying, oh, you're a Neanderthal. This is like, uh, you, you'd say in 1994, nobody ever bought a book on, on online, so Amazon has no future. This is not Amazon in 1994. This is Amazon in 2004. Bitcoin's been around for more than a decade, and more than a decade later, there's still no legitimate use case in uh, in a democracy, uh, an advanced democracy. And so, how many years do you need uh, to test this out until there's going to be some usefulness other than the Bitcoin Bros? It's like a religious uh, revival uh, for, for some folks. So, uh, my skepticism, unfortunately, has only grown. Woosaw, woosaw. Okay, let's break that down a little bit. That is pure insanity. Pure head to toe, start to finish. That whole video was the most insane discussion about Bitcoin ever. This is from the president of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve are the ones who are responsible for the money. Pretty much in America, but pretty much in the world. This is the president of that corporation. So with the Federal Reserve, there's two important things to note. I'm gonna, I got a list here as I was watching that, a list of things to talk about, but two things. Number one, the Federal Reserve is not federal. It's not associated with the US government at all. And it has no reserves. Federal Reserve, not federal, no reserves. This is the president of that. These guys have been in charge of the money for the last 120 years. No wonder this guy's scared shitless of Bitcoin because Bitcoin is literally designed to separate money from the state. The state currently controls the money through the Federal Reserve, even though they're not part of the government, they control it all. And Bitcoin is designed to separate those two. So of course, old Neil is going to be pissed at Bitcoin. But let's talk about a couple things. Number one, he said that he travels around and gives talks and he's never heard anybody that's bought anything with Bitcoin before. Number one, who would ever go to watch this meatball talk? Who are the kind of people that go and watch this guy talk? I travel around the world and give talks. Okay, so that, then he compares it to Beanie Babies. He said that uh, He said that they might as well replace the word Bitcoin with Beanie Babies because it's just a fad. So a couple things there. Number one, you can always make more Beanie Babies. If the demand for Beanie Babies goes up, you can just make more Beanie Babies. That's that's the difference there. You can't do that with Bitcoin. You also can't send Beanie Babies across the world for 
a t-shirt or a, a cell phone or whatever you want to buy. You can't send Beanie Babies in the same way that you can send Bitcoin. He also said that nobody buys anything with Bitcoin. If you watch the show on Friday, I bought a t-shirt live on the show with Bitcoin. So he doesn't have to look too far. Uh, he's, he's glad that I wasn't in the audience there. <laughs> But the, the last or last two things here is that they always have to find some way to mix it in with illicit activities. He's talked about people buying weed, going around regulations. They always have to, regardless of what they're talking about, they have to tie it back into illicit activities because that's what they want people, the, the normal people, the average person who watches this kind of bullshit. They have to, they just put these buzz, buzzwords in there. So then that's all that people get out of that. They say all these fancy different things, but then they say Beanie Babies, illicit activities, and that's what people remember from it. So the last part here is that he compared it to Amazon. Amazon is a company. Bitcoin is not a company. A better comparison would have been the internet. So he said that Amazon didn't take 15 years to catch on. But he, he's comparing apples to oranges there. Bitcoin is not a company. Bitcoin is a technology like the internet. And how long did the internet to take to catch on? How long did the internet take to catch on? 30 years. So we're 15 years into this. The internet took 30 years. This thing's moving faster than the internet. And so this was the dumbest discussion, the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And then he throws out the, the crypto bros, the Bitcoin bros just to make us sound like we're the stupid ones here. But the good news is, is that nobody watches this stuff anymore. Nobody pays attention to these idiots. There's a reason why, you know, small, even small YouTube channels like mine are getting, you know, not as many views as these people, but more quality views. People watch this just mindlessly. But the people who are here, the people in this chat, they understand this. They're not listening to that anymore. We're, we're past that now. So that's the good news. It is unbelievable. It's unbelievable that this person is talking in such a an ignorant and just totally out to lunch. And people put their trust in these people. Yeah. Rick, I'm the same way. I want to say not nice things, but we'll just say he is uneducated. I actually think that he probably owns Bitcoin himself. He just has his talking points. He has a script that he reads from. He has to throw in a couple of buzzwords there like Beanie Babies, like illicit activities. And that's the only thing that most people take away from it is that Bitcoin's bad, used by bad people, just a fad. So, yeah, Brennan says, I mean, it's sort of like asking C Steve Jobs if he had any PCs in his office. Exactly. This is like the people who, in the early 1900s, who had a business that catered to horse and buggies. So maybe they built uh, the carriages. Maybe they trimmed the horse's uh, hooves. That's essentially the same thing. It'd be like somebody who had a significant share in the horse and buggy coming on TV and talking about how bad the automobile is. It's just insanity. <clears throat> That's all it is. So uh, Justine says, if they don't believe in Bitcoin, why are they allowed to tax it? It's a good point. It's like that meme that says, if Bitcoin's worth nothing, then send me one. <laughs> it's the same thing. Everything's just so hypocritical and so backwards with these people. Kostiel says, last time I checked, Beanie Babies didn't have a $1.4 trillion market cap. Yeah, and Daniel says, viral video of a young couple that bought a house with Bitcoin last week. Exactly. Showed that on the show. The guy was living in the forest and had 500000 worth of Bitcoin and bought a house. So there you go. That's some uh, early morning motivation holy sorry zap stream some early uh monday morning motivation to get as much bitcoin as you possibly can because these people are scared shitless of it and the more scared they are the better this is going to turn out
for us, but we have to be ready for stuff. Uh, what are we got here? <laughs> yeah, I can't see the names on here, but somebody said his boxing match in regards to BitBoy was funny. I actually gained some respect for him after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Letha says marijuana banking. Yeah, that was another buzzword tossed out there that I've never heard of marijuana banking before. Okay. <laughs> Lots of good stuff in Zapdot stream chat right now. I don't want to read it on here. So the last thing I wanted to show today before we talk about our, oh, I took it off the screen. It's a big one. This is a big one. This is the president of El Salvador tweet he sent out on Saturday. Got 11 million views on it. So he says, we're offering 5,000 free passports, the equivalent to 5 billion in our passport program to highly skilled scientists, engineers, doctors, artists, and philosophers from abroad. This represents less than 0.1 of our population. So granting them full citizen status, including voting rights, poses no issue. Despite their small number, their contributions will have a huge impact on our society and the future of our country. Plus, we will facilitate their re uh, relocation by ensuring 0% taxes and tariffs on families, on moving families and assets. This includes commercial value items like equipment, software, and IP elect intellectual property. Stay tuned for more details. Damn. Damn. I can't say that I'm not going to apply for that. I don't know what I'd fall into there. We got scientists, engineers, doctors, artists, which is interesting, and philosophers. I get the scientists, engineers, doctors, but artists and philosophers, that's very interesting. I like that there's no, uh, there's, there's a few takeaways from this. Number one, there's no lawyers on there. There's no accountants on there. There's no uh, women's rights. What's what's the degree called? Women's rights or feminist rights? I don't know. Anyways, it's very interesting. So I might apply as a philosopher. <laughs> they're they're doing things right, and that's kind of the uh, the sh the main part of the show today. We're fifty minutes, fifty two minutes in now. I wanted to keep this episode short, but that's okay. We have to we have to start thinking about things much differently. We have to flip everything on its head. And El Salvador is doing that. El Salvador went from being the most dangerous country on earth to the safest place in Central America in like two or three years. And I don't know what you want to blame that on or give credit to, but probably Bitcoin has to be in that conversation. So this guy, he went and took out basically all the MS-13 gang. He took, he wiped them out completely in a very aggressive way. But that was a big part of it. So he wiped out crime. He wiped out the gangs. He started incentivizing people to come to El Salvador to visit, for, for one. So that's their main industry there is tourism. So they got a bunch of new people coming to El Salvador. They're offering incentives like this, 5,000 free passports to people who are going to add value to their society. They're setting up a, a Bitcoin volcano bond, which means that the volcano is going to be mining Bitcoin and you can purchase a bond with that. They also want to give their citizens, they want to get down to 0% income tax for their citizens using natural resources instead of human resources. So here in Canada, in the Western world, we the governments earn income tax from human resources. You go to work, you pay your tax. That's how we fund the government. In El Salvador, they're using natural resources. They hook up their volcano to a Bitcoin mining machine. That's what pays for the government to operate, to fund itself. And so over time, the countries who continue to live in this old system are going to get left behind. The countries like El Salvador are going to be the ones who win. And El Salvador is not going to be the last country that does this. People are going to catch on. And over time, there's going to be more and more countries who are doing this exact same thing. 
So unfortunately, I didn't get to talk about as much as I wanted to today in terms of flipping everything on its head, but I'm going to touch briefly on it for the last five minutes here or so. And I want you to, I just want you to start <clears throat> thinking about how things are going to move forward here differently. Because I think that most people have it in their minds that we're going to make this this transition over to Bitcoin and everything's just going to slowly happen. Businesses are going to start accepting Bitcoin. People are going to start using Bitcoin more and more. People are going to start getting paid in Bitcoin and all of those things are going to happen. But the whole system itself is going to essentially needs to be flipped on its head for anything to change because there, there's really no way to vote our way out of this. There's nothing that there's no single person on earth who can turn this around for us. There's no politicians that can do it. It has to be from us. And we have to completely flip everything on its head because the, that entire system is based on a broken money, fiat. That's what everything's based on. And with that comes all the different incentives and all the structures and all the hierarchies in a fiat world. And so I just want you to start thinking about everything that you know today is going to look different in a Bitcoin world. Everything. We're not, we're not just going to keep doing the same things, but paying Bitcoin. Every incentive, every system, every hierarchy is going to be completely flipped on its head. And I'm going to give you one example today because this is going to tie into our Living in the Future chat for today. And this is just one example. So I've been talking about the Living in the Future tier for a while. And big shout out to everybody who has gone and signed up and joined that um, tier there. But one of the things there, the, our second focus in there is building businesses in Bitcoin and earning Bitcoin, not just buying Bitcoin and hoping that our purchasing power goes up over time, but actually earning Bitcoin so we can continue to accumulate real wealth in the world. And so building businesses in there, believe it or not, we're, we've only been existing for about a month now. And we've had one business that has already come from that, has already started. And it's a media company. It's a, it's a small media company, but it's a media company nonetheless. And so think about our traditional um, media, not, not the news or anything like that. that. We're kind of past that point already. I want you to start thinking a little bit further in, in, into the future. So even with YouTube, if you were somebody out there, we did a show last week in terms of starting your own YouTube channel. But if, if you're somebody who has something to say or wants to talk about whatever it is that you do and you think that there's somebody out there who could get value from that, your path in the fiat world, in the legacy system, is pretty difficult. You have to start a channel. You have to find a community there. You have to find, you have to get to 4,000 hours watched and YouTube trims it very heavily very heavily. And you also have to get, uh oh, am I breaking up? I don't know. Let me know if I'm okay here. Cause I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of a little rant here. So we're going to assume that I'm okay here, but <laughs> where was I with that? So YouTube, you have to get a thousand subscribers which is a very difficult task for one. You have to get 4,000 watch hours, very difficult task. But in this new world, in this new economy where, and, and so even with that system, you have to look at what's happening there. It's YouTube. They get to control the message. They get to decide whether what you can and can't say on their platform. They get advertisements. They show it in a very traditional fashion where you're watching a video and all of a sudden it cuts out and you get uh, an ad slammed down your throat from a company that might not even be relevant to you, right? It's just part of the YouTube uh, structure, the system there. So very old, very traditional there. YouTube's been making all the money. They're letting all their content creators do all the work for them to bring people to their platform. And maybe after a year or two or a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, you might get a couple dollars from YouTube for all that work that you put in. So with that, what I want to do and what we're doing over in Living in the Future is we're basically flipping that whole structure on its head. So we're looking for eight people. This is kind of going to be the core, the partners, essentially, within this business. 
We're looking for eight people. I'm going to read through the roles here and you can see if you're interested or not. But it's going to be fully decentralized. Everybody's going to have an equal share. We're going to be earning Bitcoin, not money. We already have four or five clients signed on that we're already receiving Bitcoin from. And what that's going to look like is we're going to be all equal. We're going to actually be paying smaller channels to add to advertise our clients on their channels. So even if they don't have a thousand subscribers, even if they don't have 4,000 watch hours, it doesn't matter. They could have 50 subscribers on there and we're going to start paying them in Bitcoin based on the amount of views on their page. So if a business signs up for us with this media company, they're going to get their promotion on this channel plus X amount of other channels of small YouTube creators who, who don't want to wait for YouTube to pay them anymore. They're going to come to us. We're going to pay them in Bitcoin. They're going to help promote our clients in a very decentralized way. So that's essentially what's happening. As we flip this world on its head, we're moving from a centralized system, a centralized structure of everything into a decentralized structure of everything. So the ownership, the partners are all going to be decentralized. The clients are going to get a decentralized method of, of promoting their business and very targeted. And so the clients that we're going to be reaching out to and who are going to be using our media company are going to be, they know their audience is going to be Bitcoiners. So I'm not going to watch an ad for soap. I don't care to listen to an ad for a soap or a, an Ethereum or, or a fake Michael Saylor talking about his Bitcoin giveaway. These are, these are going to be Bitcoin businesses promoting to Bitcoiners. And so even if you're a small channel, we're going to be paying you in Bitcoin to help promote our clients. So here is the, I'll give you a few. Uh, I sent this to the little group we got right now, but um, we're looking for eight people, eight partners. And you have to be serious about this. This isn't something that, uh, you know, you can just half ass. You're still going to be able to do your job full time, whatever it is you do. This is going to be a couple hours per week off the start, but everybody's going to have their own role. And so these are the roles that I came up with over the weekend. So number one is going to be client relations, the companies that we help promote. Number two is going to be partner relations, the people who work with us, the other YouTube channels and other media channels. Uh, the sat keeper instead of the bookkeeper, which is going to log all the ins and outflows. Uh, the ad writer, so they're going to learn the story of our clients and uh, write a script to be shared across the network. We're going to have a Noster guy. We're going to have a brand manager to make sure all the communication is clean and consistent. Captain Lightning is going to be in charge of the lightning inflows and outflows, the payments. And the bridge, which is going to be connecting with businesses that aren't in Bitcoin yet. So there's eight roles that we need. We have a couple people in there so far, but we're looking for more. So we're going to definitely give a priority to anybody who's in the living in the future tier. I'm going to spend some time talking about that right now as we jump over there. But, oh, my balance on Zap.Stream is below 500 sets. I got to top that up. Thanks for the reminder, Zap.Stream. It costs a little bit of Bitcoin to operate on Zap.Stream, but it's worth it. It's the new, the new YouTube Bitcoin version. So I wanted to I wanted to discuss that on the show today because I think that one of the themes of this channel and I think that why people have been enjoying it is because we don't just talk about the price of Bitcoin. We don't look at the charts on Bitcoin. We look at the intrinsic value of Bitcoin and how we can benefit from it, how we can build in it, how we can grow economies and communities and networks around Bitcoin to essentially ignore the old system. And so this is the first of many businesses that we're going to be starting in living in the future and i know that there's probably somebody out there watching this channel uh, who has maybe be has been considering joining the tier living in the future and i'm hoping that this will kind of be the extra push that you need if you are wanting to be involved in this from the very ground level we're looking for eight partners everybody's going to have an equal share and we're going to build this thing together and i, I have some very long-term visions for this so if you're interested Click the link in the description. It says living in the future. Join for a week. You can try it out. If it's not for you, you can cancel it. But I think that you will be. And I think that if you are somebody who wants to start earning Bitcoin, 
We're going to probably keep about 50% of the Bitcoin as a long-term reserve for a long, for a very long time. And then we're going to have, I have about five different things that we're going to do with the rest of it throughout. So if you're more interested in earning Bitcoin than fiat, check that out. Highly suggest it. We're going to jump over there right now and talk about it. Um, so with that, I want to say I appreciate everybody very much. The chat was very active today, too active for me, but that's, uh, but that's okay. That's a good problem to have. Gary says he's interested. If, if any of those roles that I mentioned sound like something that you would be good at, we're looking for serious people. Because this is something I think that, and I want you to compare this to any industry out there, whatever, whatever industry that you work in. Don't think about how we can put Bitcoin into this industry. Think about how we're going to flip this industry on its head and it's going to change. Bitcoin's going to change it. The incentives, the structure, and the hierarchy of it from a centralized into a decentralized system. So I appreciate everybody on YouTube, everybody on zap.stream. I got to top up my balance on there right after the show. <laughs> but uh, we'll leave it with that. This was supposed to be a shorter show. It went on for an hour and six minutes. So three things before we go. Number one, have a great Monday. Be calm, be cheerful in everything you do today, every interaction you do today. Number two, if you are somebody, every everything that I talk about is going to be in the description below. And I'm actually going to start something cool over these next few weeks. I'm going to start leaving a little Easter eggs within the description. So one of them, an example I thought of is I'm going to just randomly throw things like uh, send me an email to this to redeem a thousand free sats or something. So everything that you need to know is going to be in the description. All the companies we talk about, uh, how to get a hold of me, all that kind of stuff is in the description. And of course, how to sign up for the living in the future tier. So watch out for that. There's nothing today, but you can take a look in case there is, but there's not. So that's, uh, that's it for today. We're, we're jumping over there right now. I hope you have the best day of your life today, a great Monday, and we'll see you either on Living in the Future tier or we'll see you on the, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye-bye.